everyone. How's it going? Really excited to be a part of this event. You know, the Tea Party of the Revolution is alive and well on the campuses. Students are getting really excited about the message of liberty. You know, we were, we were, uh, we were tabling last week running the World Shortest Political Quiz, and we would get kids coming up to the table, students, and they wouldn't even know. They would just see it, you know, that's a Young Americans for Liberty. We're for getting government out of our lives. And they would say, how do I get involved? Let's get involved now. You know, we, had, we had an event last night, and we had uh, a potential candidate for the 4th District in Indiana uh, for Congress come speak to our group. And what's amazing is that the people that are running for Congress now, they're average Americans. This guy, he fixes elevators for a living, but, you know, he thinks, well, I can do a better job than those crony capitalists in government right now that are just Woo! They're, they're yeah! just making money. Woo! It's time that we actually take government back in our own hands. All right, a little bit about the group, Young Americans for Liberty. Well, you know, we kind of embody a lot of what the Tea Party is. Uh, what we stand for is constitutional government, uh, individual liberty, free market, sound money, and a non-interventionist foreign policy. And we're a nonpartisan group. And so, you know, we have Republicans, we have uh, independents, we have libertarians, people that don't associate with anything, but they just get really excited. Uh, and, you know, what's amazing about the Tea Party is that it's not just one group of people. I mean, it's a whole bunch of different factions. You know, there's like there's Republicans, there's independents, there's libertarians, and I bet there's even some independent Democrats. I mean, there's all sorts of people. But what's what's great is that we can all come together and we can unite and say, We've had enough. Yeah! So I think it's important that we ask ourselves, what should the role of government be? Do we really want government, you know, involved in the car industry, no! running railroads? No! I mean, it, it, it's absurd. Now now they're now We've got uh, healthcare, uh, you know, more healthcare involved in the government, and so you, what it comes down to is, can, can we afford this? No. So, so you know, I I would expect you would expect liberals to grow government, and uh, and you'd expect the, the conservatives to cut government. But you know, what it comes down to is that we don't really see a divide. It seems like everyone nowadays is just corporatist. You know, Obama's a corporatist. And, okay, so if you're going to grow government, at least at least be principled about it. But they're all just taking money, and I, I think it's time that we actually got back to the core values and principles and go back to the Constitution. <laughs> you know, I think people, you know, they're getting duped all the time. They say, well, you know, this guy is saying something really great, so I'm going to go vote for him. But then they get into office, and... It's just, you know, they've just, they had a whole bunch of lies. We saw it in 2008, we saw it in 2000. And, and, I mean, we really have to go and look and see, okay, what's this guy's track record? And, and hold, you know, hold their feet to the fire. Say, this is what we want, and we want it now. Yeah. You can't just talk to people. You actually have to act on what you're saying. And if they don't act, then we've got to kick them out. Yeah. We've got we've to end crony capitalism. We've got a serious problem of over-regulation. The government regulates the people. I say, why don't we flip that around, deregulate the people, and let's regulate the government! Yeah! You know, socialism never works. All it does is it never raises anyone's standard of living. All, you know, what it does is it brings down the, uh, the standard of living of the people that have actually made something for themselves, and then the guys that, you know, uh, we're taking welfare. Now they're just sitting on their butts even more and they say, okay, well, I have no reason because I'm getting handouts, but everyone's poor. And, the, you know, the principle of America is that you came, you know, either you came to this country to make your name, make a name for yourself, or you're in this country to try to make it for yourself. But if the government's handing you checks for, you know, because you're unemployed, then what good is that going to do? How are we going to be productive again? How are we going to become a productive society? How, you know, how can we take this back if I, you know, it doesn't make any sense. <laughs> uh, I, mean, I don't know what the guys in Washington are thinking, but uh, uh, maybe they need, they lost their common sense. Uh, they never had it. You know, I, I think we should also question, uh, you know, we, it's important that we cut, you know, government, cut spending domestically. I think we need to also cut government abroad. You know, we have 700 bases around the world. We're in 135 countries. And honestly, we 
can't afford we can't afford that. You know, I believe in a strong national defense, so I think we should bring the troops home and start defending. You know, maybe we should question the Federal Reserve System, what they do behind closed doors. I don't know, but I think if the American people found out the kind of scams they were running in there, we wouldn't have a Federal Reserve System anymore. Do we even need a central bank? No. Devaluing our money? You know, maybe we should question all the taxes. You know, maybe if we got rid of Social Security taxes, Medicare taxes, the income tax, maybe we could actually stimulate the economy if people could keep more of their own money. Yeah. You know, we've got, we've got a, a national debt that is going to be a burden to my generation, it's going to be a burden to my children's generation and their children. And, you know, historically, both parties have been supporters of incrementalism and overspending in government. And I think it's time that we, we forgot a little bit about the parties and go back to the principle about the Constitution, about limited government, and, and, uh, and really start making some serious changes there. I think what's great is that we've got all these people together, that we can band together, and we can make these changes, and we can make it happen. We can elect individuals to government that actually support these principles and are going to act on what they say.